Well, welcome back to our coverage here on theCUBE of AWS reInvent 22. We are on day three, starting to wind down, but still a lot of exciting topics to cover here on the AWS Global Showcase, part of the startup program there at AWS. Joining us now, two representatives from LTI Mindtree. You say LTI Mindtree, I thought they were two different companies where they're actually one and the same, been together just a mere two weeks now. We'll hear more about that from Sid Bora, who is the Chief Business Officer at LTI Mindtree, and Ashish Varakar, who is the v Vice President of Cloud Success at LTI Mindtree. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us here on theCUBE. Pleasure is all ours. And congratulations, uh, so two weeks uh, in the making, uh, in its infancy, still in the honeymoon period, uh, but how's the two weeks been? Everything all right? Well, two weeks have been very exciting. How about? Well, I would say the the period prior to that was just as exciting as you can imagine. Oh, sure. Uh, and we're super excited about what the future holds for this company because we truly believe that we have a remarkable opportunity to create value for our clients as one company. Well, let's so, talk about LTI Mindtree then a little bit. Ashish, I'll let you uh, carry the ball on this. Let's tell us about your services, about your core focus, and about those opportunities that Siddharth was just telling us about. So I think with the two companies coming together, we have a larger opportunity to like go to market with our end-to-end -end business transformation services and leveraging cloud platforms, right? So, and that's what we do. Uh, my responsibility particularly is to see to it that uh, what customers are deploying on cloud is aligned to their business outcomes and then take it forward from there. Yeah, Vice President Cloud Success, that, 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 that gives you a lot of runway, <laughs> right, does it not? I mean, uh, how do you define success in the cloud? Because there are a lot of different areas of complexity with which companies are dealing. So I think we would agree that um, uh, in today's scenario, customers are not looking for a platform, right? But they're looking for a platform which can deliver business value. Uh, they're looking at business value and resiliency and, and, and at the end, the cost, right? So uh, if you're able to deliver these three uh, things to the customer through the cloud implementation, I think that's the success for us. Right. We've talked about transformation a lot this week and modernization, right? Then, which yes. is, those are two pretty key buzzwords right. right now, we're hearing a lot of. So when, when you see, uh, Sid, you know, when the companies come to you and they say, okay, it, it's time for us to make this commitment. Um, do they make it generally wholeheartedly? Is there still some trepidation of the unknown? Um, because there's a lot of as we've said, complexity to this, it's multi-dimensional. Yeah, we can go public, we can go hybrid, we can go multi-cloud, I mean. That's right. We got a lot of flavors. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, 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 we, we, we see a spectrum. Uh, there, there are customers who are very early in the journey of uh, getting onto cloud and are a little uncertain about what value they can get out of it. Mm -hmm. And on the other end of the spectrum, there are companies who are well, into the journey, who have understood what are the uh, benefits of truly leveraging cloud, who also understand what are the challenges they will face in getting onto the journey. Mm -hmm. So we get to meet a spectrum of customers, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, if you ask me where do bulk of them lie, mm -hmm. I would say early in their journey. Okay. Uh, I would say there are only a handful who have that maturity where they can predict what's exactly going to happen on the cloud journey, what value they will accumulate through the process. So there's a lot of hand-holding to be done, a lot of you know, solving together to be done with our clients. You know, it is such a dynamic environment too, right? Um, um, you have new opportunities that are, seem to be developed and released on a daily basis right. almost, right? Um, there's a, a large amount of flexibility, I would think, that has to be in place because where you think you're going to go today might not be where you wind up in six months. That's true. Is that Absolutely. fair? Uh, absolutely fair. And uh, I think uh, from that perspective, if you look at the number of services that AWS provides, right, and uh, what customers are looking for is how can they uh, compose their business processes using these multiple services in a very seamless manner. And most of the m announcements that we have seen uh, during the reInvent as well, they're talking about seamless connectivity between their services, they're talking about security, they're talking about creating a data fabric, the data zone that they announced. I think all these things put together, uh, if you are able to kind of connect the dots and uh, and drive the business processes, uh, I think that's that's what we want to do with, for our customers. And, and the value uh, to AWS it just can't be underscored enough, I would assume, right? Absolutely. Because there's, there's comfort there, there's confidence there. Um, 
when, when you bring that to the table as well, along with your services, what kind of magnitude are we talking about here? What kind of force do you think? How would you characterize that? Well, I, I think, you know, firstly I would say that uh, most of our engagements are not just services. Uh, Ashish and team and the company have invested heavily in building IP mm -hmm. that we pair with our services okay. so that we bring non-linearity and more, uh, I, I would say, certainty to the outcomes that our customers get. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can share some examples uh, Please, during the yeah. course of the conversation. Yeah. Uh, but to answer your question in terms of magnitude, uh, what we are collaborating with AWS on for our clients ranges from uh, helping customers build more resiliency, and I'm talking about life sciences companies, mm -hmm. build more resiliency in their manufacturing R&D processes. Mm -hmm. That's so critical. Mm -hmm. uh, it was even more critical during the pandemic times because sure. we were working with some of the pharma companies who were contributing to the efforts in the pandemic. That's one end of the spectrum. On the other side, we're helping streaming companies and media companies digitize their supply chain, and their supply chain is the media mm. supply chain, mm. so that it is more effective, it's more efficient, it's more real time, again, using the power of the cloud. Mm -hmm. We're helping pharmaceutical companies uh, drive far greater speed in the R&D processes. We're helping banking companies drive far more compliance in their anti-money laundering efforts and all of those things. So if you look at the magnitude, we judge the magnitude by the business impact that it's creating, mm -hmm. and we are very excited about what AWS, LTI Mindtree, and the customer are able to create in terms of those business impacts. Mm -hmm. And these are such major decisions. That's right. For a company, right, to make. Um, and, and there are a number of factors that come into play here. Uh, what are you hearing from the C-suite with regard to what what weighs the most in their mind, and, and is there, um, is it a matter of uh, you know fear of missing out, or, or is it about trying to stay ahead of your competition, catching up the competition? I mean, generally speaking, you know, where where are the, the there's the sweet sweet weighing in on this. I, I think um, in the current times, I, I think there is a certain level of adoption of cloud that's already happened in most yes. enterprises. So most CIOs in the C-suite are they already aware get it. of. They already get it. They, they kind okay. of get it. Okay. But I would say that they're very cagey about a bunch of things. They're very cagey about, am I going to end up spending too much for too little? Mm -hmm. uh, am I going to be able to deliver this transformation at the speed that I'm hoping to achieve? What about security, compliance? Mm -hmm. What about the cost of running in the cloud? So those are some really important factors that sometimes end up slowing the cloud transformation journeys down because customers end up solving for them or not knowing for them. So while there is a decent amount of awareness about what cloud can do, there are some, a whole bunch of important factors that they continue to solve for as they go down that journey. And so what kind of tools do you provide them then? Uh, so uh, primarily what we do is, uh, to Siddharth's point, right? So okay. to, uh, on one end we want to uh, see to it that we are doing the business transformation and uh, all our cloud journeys start with the business North Star. So we align, we, we have doubled down on say five to six uh, uh, business domains, and for each of these business domains, industries, we have created business North Star. For this business North Star, we define the use cases, and these use cases then get uh, lit up through our platform. So what we have done is we have codified everything onto our platform, we call it Infinity. Uh, so primarily business processes from level one, level two, level three, level, um, uh, and then the the KPIs which are associated with these business processes, the technical KPIs and the business KPIs, and then tying it back to what you have deployed on cloud. So we have end-to-end -end, uh, uh, cloud transformation journeys enabled for customers through the business North Star. Mm -hmm. And Infinity is can your can product. Add something please to do, yeah, please. Yeah, so you know, Ashish covered the part about demystifying. If I were to do this particular cloud initiative. It's not just modernizing the application, this is about demystifying what business benefit will accrue to you. Mm -hmm. uh, very rare to find, unless you do a very deep dive assessment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what, what the platform we built also accelerates, you talked about modernization earlier in the con conversation, accelerates the modernization process by automating a whole bunch of activities that are mm -hmm. often manual. Mm -hmm. It bakes in security and compliance into everything it, do, it does. It automates a whole bunch of cloud operations, including things like FinOps. 
So this is a life cycle platform that essentially codifies best practices. Mm -hmm. So that you are not getting success by coincidence, you're getting success by design. So that's really what, that's, yeah. that, that's really how we've approached the topic of realizing the true power of cloud by making sure that it's repeatedly delivered. I, you know, I want to hit on security too because you, you, you brought that up just a few moments ago. Obviously, um, you know, we all, and I'd say we, big on, we can do a better job, right? I mean, there are still problems, there are still challenges. There are a lot of bad actors out there. Sure. They're staying ahead of the game. So as people come to you, clients come to you, and, and uh, they raise these security concerns, what's your advice to them in terms of, you know, what kind of environment they're going into and what precautions or protections they can put in place to try to give themselves a little bit of peace of mind about how they're going to operate. You want to take those? So, uh, I think primarily if you are going to cloud, you are going with an assumption that you are moving out of your uh, your firewalls, right? You are putting something out uh, out of your network area. So, and from that perspective, the perimeter security from the cloud perspective is very, very important. And then each and every service or the interactions between the services and uh, what you integrate out of your organization, everything needs to be secured through the right guardrails. And we integrate all those things into our platform so that whatever uh, new apps that get deployed or built or any COTS product that gets deployed on cloud, everything is secured from the uh, from a 360 degree perspective. So primarily, maintaining a good security posture, which uh, on a hybrid cloud, I would not say only cloud, but uh, extending your um, uh, your on-prem security posture to cloud is very, very important when you go to uh, implementing anything on cloud. If, if you had a crystal ball, um, and, and we were sitting down here a year from now, you know, what do you think we'd be talking about with regard to you know developing this, these end-to-end -end, uh, uh, opportunities that you are? What what's the I wouldn't say missing piece, but a piece that you would like to have refined to the point where you come back next year and say, John, guess what we did? Here, look what we were able to accomplish. Um, anything you, that that you're looking at that you want to tackle here in 2023, or is there some fine tuning somewhere that that you think can even tighten your game even more than it is already? We have, we have a long, long way to go. I right, would right. I would say I think uh, my my core takeaway in, in terms of where the world of technology is headed because cloud is you know is a essentially a component of what uh, customers want to achieve. It's a medium through which they want to achieve. I, I think we live in a highly change oriented economy. Mm -hmm. Every industry is what I call getting replatformed, right? New processes, new experiences, new products, new efficiency. Mm -hmm. uh, so a year from now, and I can tell you even for a few years from now, we would be constantly looking at our success in terms of how did cloud move the needle on releasing products faster? Mm -hmm. How did cloud move the needle on driving better experience and, and better consumer loyalty, for example. How did cloud move the needle on a more efficient supply chain? So increasingly the technology metrics, like you know, keeping the lights on or solving tickets or releasing code on time, would move towards business metrics. Mm -hmm. Because that's really the ultimate goal of technology or cloud. Mm -hmm. So I would say the my crystal ball, crystal ball says we will increasingly be talking business language and business outcomes. Uh, Jeff Bezos is an incredible example, mm -hmm. right? One of his annual letters, he co connected everything back into how much time did consumers save by using Amazon. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that's really where, in a world, that's the world we're headed towards. Okay. Ashish, any your thoughts on that? I think Siddharth put it quite well. Um, I would say, uh, if you are able to make a real business impact for our customers in next one year, uh, helping them in driving, uh, driving some of their newer services on cloud, uh, through cloud, uh, that would be a success factor for us. Right. Well gentlemen, uh, congratulations on the merger. I said two weeks, still very much in the honeymoon phase and I'm sure it's going to go very well and I look forward to seeing you back here in a year. We'll sit down, same spot, let's remember fifth floor and uh, we'll give it a shot and see how accurate you were on that. Absolutely. Wonderful, it's been thank a pleasure. You, thank you gentlemen, thank, thank you for, thank you for joining us. Very good, Ashish, good to see you thank sir. You. A pleasure. We'll continue here, we're at the Venetian at AWS reInvent 22, continue with the AWS Global Showcase startup. I'm John Walls, you're watching theCUBE, the leader in high tech coverage. <laughs>